We are back with part 3 of our 2014 FIFA World Cup series with Portugal. And just to get you up to date with what's happening, Portugal and Italy are neck and neck in Group F. However, I do have a game in hand on Italy. So if I beat Italy in our next match, then I'll pull away by three points. I'm loving the team right now for Portugal. I'm loving the formation and everything like that. You know, it's going very well. And if we beat Italy in our next match, then for sure we can probably qualify. I have every faith that Portugal can do it. In the last match we played against Italy in the last video, we played well against them, beating them 2-1. So here, away from home, it could be a bit harder, but uh, as long as we don't lose, then I'm good. Moutinho to take this one. It's crossed in. And header, and that's gone straight in. What a bullet header that was from William Carvalho. Wow, that was just a really nice header. And Portugal have taken the lead early on in Rome. Great start for Portugal after that header. Um, of course, Italy can easily get back into this game. And they might do here, and it was offside. See what I mean? Balotelli did score the offside goal. Perlo's cross was just offside. Struggling to defend against Italy here. Cresito. Gets his ball cut out there. And Nani can push for Portugal. A through ball to Ronaldo. Can he get it? Ronaldo. Oh, that was good. Ronaldo. Oh, yes. 2-0. What a strike that was by Ronaldo. And that one rolls in for two. And Ronaldo has showed up again when it matters against a big side. You know, he did it in the first match against Italy. And he's doing it here. 2-0 to Almerin. And the shot there just palmed away by Buffon and caught. We could have three goals in this half. Portugal have been playing outstanding away from home. And um, we'll be going into half time with a 2-0 on the score sheet. Italy haven't done much in front of our goal. They scored an offside goal, but that's about it. Over the top. Oh, Bruma is getting on the end of this one. It will be 3-0. A bit of luck there. Buffon couldn't quite catch it. And Bruma has made it free for Portugal. This is outstanding by Portugal. I'm really getting used to this team. And I know it's a five-star team. So I'm going to play better with a five-star team. All the formations and the players I have on the field are exactly the players that I want for this run. And I think that, you know, based on this result, I reckon we could definitely go on to have a deep run. In the World Cup. If we qualify. Might have it here. They do. Abate crosses it in. Balotelli just wide. And Italy. Their only real chance of the game. Apart from the offside. And Portugal have locked them down. Crossed in. Wow. Ronaldo just headed it in. And that is 4-0 against the Italians. Ronaldo again shows up. Two goals against Italy. Just like in the last game. And well. I mean what a ball that was. And Buffon didn't come for it. The Italians didn't bother to collect it. So yeah. Great. Great performance. And we'll definitely be winning this game. Carvalho. Almeron. Cohen Trau. Still 15 minutes to play. Italy. Uh, on the ropes here against Portugal they just cannot stop us from passing it around here and how did that go past Buffon <laughs> I don't know how that worked but Nani has scored to make it 5-0 against Italy and look at this absolute calamity there Buffon just having an absolute howler in net there he couldn't even get the ball so it's going to be a corner to Italy they have a chance to get one back at least Nope, that's not going to happen. Balotelli has got it. And Cresito goes for the strike. Nobody is going to get there. Oh, hang on. Okay, well, he stole it back and he scores. That's 5-1. Uh, it was a nice strike, but it won't change nothing apart from the fact that Italy has scored. And that is going to be it. Portugal have dominated Italy in this game. Five goals to one to show them that they deserve to be top of the group. And, you know, I don't think the rest of the group should be a problem after this result. We've shown how good we've been against a five-star team. The form is obviously so incredible that we're scoring five goals against a five-star rival in this group. So... I think Scotland and Finland will still have to watch out for just in case they want to be irritating. But Kazakhstan, I mean, 
well, <laughs> I mean, good luck trying to beat me. And as you can see here, that is the group table. So Portugal are three points ahead of Italy with a game in hand. Scotland could potentially, with a good run of games, could potentially nick that playoff spot away from Italy if Italy drop any more games. So our next match is going to be against Kazakhstan away from home. Again, it shouldn't be that much of a problem, especially when I've left the first team on the field for this one. You know, I haven't changed anything from the last match. So, you know, with my first team out, we should be blowing away Kazakhstan, just like we did against San Marino um, earlier in the campaign. Pushing his way past. He's just far too good for these Kazakhstan players. And... That's a little bit unfortunate for Kazakhstan, but Nani has scored to make it 1-0. We went for the initial shot with Ronaldo, it was blocked, and it went straight out to Nani, who taps it in. Portugal are 1-0 up against Kazakhstan. Great start. Look at that Kazakhstan player there, trying to like do skills against me. So far, Portugal have struggled to get forward again. Kazakhstan are kind of locked down, and you got to respect it, you know? They're actually trying to play against me. Not like San Marino did when they just let us score like six goals against them. Or Italy, actually, to be fair. Italy were not that great either. Half time, 1 0 up against Kazakhstan. All that matters is that we're getting the wins. It doesn't matter if we're winning by like five goals or one goal. You know, a win's a win. Gonna be a corner to Portugal. 63rd minute. Is there anything here for Portugal? No, not quite. Cohen Trau out to Matinho. Oh, good save. And this is a really valiant effort from Kazakhstan to try and stop me from scoring more goals. Into the middle to Nani. Is there... Oh, Ronaldo's shot is saved. <laughs> Again, the Kazakh keeper comes up big against Ronaldo. Cross that one in. Ronaldo's header is blocked. And it hasn't been a brilliant performance here from Portugal. The first team as well, might I add. But they got the job done. Only a 1-0. You know, a lot of people might think that's a bad result. But I don't really care. It's still three points. And um, Kazakhstan actually played really well in that game. Especially that man there, the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper denied a lot of shots. So our next match of qualifying is going to be against Finland. We are at home for this one. Potentially could slip up in this one if Finland decide to play well. Of course, you know, that 1-0 against Kazakhstan was a little bit concerning considering that we couldn't score more goals. So, of course, Finland are going to be super defensive in this one as well. Finland are going to try and spoil our run in this qualifying. Um, but I'm... I'm confident that Portugal can win the game, even just by a 1-0 or something. Through ball. Here comes Bruma. The pace. It's going to be a bit too much for Finland. And we smash it into the bottom corner to make it 1-0. Bruma is just too fast for the Finnish defence. And finishes in style against Finland. The team just feels so good to play as. It's quite... Well, it's been quite a long time since I played as a 5-star nation on this game for a qualifying run. I don't actually think I've done a qualifying run with a five-star nation on this game yet. And Finland have just scored. What a ball. And Hatamasha scored to make it 1-1. That was a hell of a ball. You've got to give him that. And I didn't think he'd score from that angle, but he did. And Finland have equalised. Ronaldo cheated. Ronaldo. <laughs> oh, that's a bit cheesy. That was so cheesy. I, I couldn't get Ronaldo. At well, he wasn't leaving the box. And Ronaldo takes it off the goalkeeper's hands and taps it in. And Portugal lead through a very controversial goal. Look at that. Well, it didn't show the full replay. But Ronaldo takes it off the goalkeeper and just taps it in. I mean, <laughs> Ronaldo. That was a dirty play by Cristiano Ronaldo. It's half time and Portugal lead thanks to Cristiano Ronaldo's, well, controversial goal. I mean, I know you can. I don't know. Is, is that allowed to, like, can you actually do that in real life when a goalkeeper's kicking the ball? Um, you can just get in front of it and just, like, I don't know, just stop it. Like, surely that's not allowed. 
um people are going to call me out for not knowing the rules of football now but <laughs> I, I i don't i genuinely don't think that's actually allowed but this game allowed it and um yeah we have been all over finland nine shots to one they they've obviously scored their shot but they haven't done much else not much has happened in this second half of portugal They've been a bit flat attacking wise, but some of our players are really out of stamina now, so I kind of understand it. Almarin, oh, the deflection almost took it in. It's going to be a corner to Portugal in the 90th minute. Can we get a third just to cap off the game? Header, oh, good save. And it's gone back into the box and blocked. Oh, okay. Well, great defending by Finland to stop the third from going in, but once this is booted away, it will probably be game over. And Portugal have got another win in this campaign, and surely now with only two games left to play, one against Kazakhstan and one against Scotland, we probably have done it. So with two games to play, Portugal have pretty much done it I'd say our goal difference is better than Italy's and even if we drop our last two games and Italy win their last two games our goal difference should be better than Italy's like by a mile so um, I think we will be good especially we've got Kazakhstan in one of the last games and and Scotland as well Scotland might be hard because they are pressing for that playoff position and I kind of hope Scotland get it over Italy that would be a massive surprise so for this match against Kazakhstan I've completely changed the lineup so that we can rest for our match against Scotland hopefully the reserves can get the points against Kazakhstan I don't see why they can so we are back at home for this next match against Kazakhstan and again it should be a win even if it is just a 1-0 like last time. Um, I would say that we were a little unlucky in the last time that we played Kazakhstan because their goalkeeper was just really lights out in the last game against us. You know Ronaldo was actually shooting on goal and he was saving all those shots. Carlos Martins, he scores to make it 1-0 in the 40th minute. Carlos Martins has done it for Portugal. And, um, well, that was a good strike. He was left on his own now and he just smashes it into the top corner. And we have taken the lead against Kazakhstan. Going to be a free kick to Portugal. I don't know who's good at free kicks because literally um, these are the reserves. So, I'm, I'm... I'm just going to take a chance with Carlos Martins. I'm going to take a chance and just hope that it goes straight in. Yes! What a goal by Carlos Martins! And that is 2-0 to Portugal. Just an incredible free kick from Martins. That's who the game told me to use. So I was like, okay, I'll run with it. And it was just a fantastic free kick, wasn't it? I mean, look at that. Just top bins and... Love to score free kicks like that when you get the chance, especially with a player that is a reserve, pretty much. So, yeah, fantastic stuff by Martins. Portugal cross it in. Eder. And that's a goal. And it's Helder Prostigo with a goal to make it 3-0. Game, set and match against Kazakhstan. We have qualified for the World Cup in style with our reserves. I mean, you know, who's surprised about that, to be fair? The reserves played better than the first team, to be honest with you. First team only got one goal against Kazakhstan. The reserves have actually done a lot better. And that is going to be it. Portugal have qualified for the FIFA World Cup 2014 in Brazil. So congratulations to Portugal. I mean, it wasn't that hard of a group. The only team that really posed a threat to us was Italy. And we dispatched of them in style over the two matches. Um, so yeah, Portugal fully deserve it. And I'm really excited to see how this team can perform at the actual World Cup. Let's have a look at the situations in the other groups before we go into the World Cup draw. And there's a lot of groups that still have be well yet to be decided. So our group is pretty much done. I reckon Italy will win their last match because they'll probably play against like Kazakhstan or San Marino or someone. Um, but in Group A, we've got Denmark, Serbia and Belgium all fighting for top spot. So it will be very interesting to see who will win that one. In Group B, it's exactly the same between Romania, Hungary and Switzerland. Um, two points separate Romania and uh, Switzerland. Also Hungary are sandwiched in the middle. Iceland fell off a little bit and so did 
uh, Ireland as well. In Group C, you'd think that Russia have got that top spot secured. Um, Bosnia could push for first if they wanted to. I think Ukraine... Yeah, I think Ukraine have definitely missed out. But um, that was a pretty close finish between those five nations there. In Group D, it's all to play for between the Netherlands, France and Croatia. Um, so, yeah, one of them is going to be eliminated from World Cup qualifying. In Group E, the Czech Republic are still two points ahead of England. And England are in danger of losing that playoff spot if they lose their last game and Slovakia win their last game. That would be incredible if England got knocked out of that group because, um, yeah, 2014 England, even though they were bad in real life, they're very overrated on this game. So um, it would be uh, a little miracle if the Czech Republic and Slovakia qualified together. In Group G, Germany have probably wrapped up that group, I'd say. Turkey behind them by three points. Montenegro are just behind Turkey as well. Can Montenegro make it or will it be Turkey? We'll have to find out later. Uh, and in Group H, Spain and Poland have wrapped that group up pretty much. Like, Israel can't catch them up and neither can Albania. And it's the same in Group I. Slovenia and Greece have got the last two positions. So, yeah, um, it'll be down to the last day in that group. Last match of qualifying then. Can Portugal go perfect in this one against Scotland? If we win this match, then we get 30 points and... You know, that would be a perfect campaign. And it's nice to have a perfect campaign on 2014. Bruma. Oh, that's nestled into the bottom corner from that shot. And Bruma has scored to make it 1-0 against Scotland. Eight minutes in. And this is not good for Scotland. I mean, of course, Scotland can't qualify anyway because Italy will probably win their last match. But that was a nice strike by Bruma. And that's 1-0. It's a good ball. And here comes Nani. I think he's a little bit too quick for Scotland here. And thankfully, the Scottish keeper did save that shot for Scotland. But Ronaldo, another save. Well, the game's been kind of quiet. Um, Portugal haven't really pressed that hard. Scotland are really trying to get back into this game. But, um, well, to no avail, really, for them. Nani. To Bruma, it's tapped in. It is 2-0. And Bruma has just finished the game here. And that will be three points for Portugal, surely. Well, free kick to Scotland. What can they do here? Crossed in. And that's actually headed in there by Hutton. And that will be a consolation goal for Scotland for sure. Scotland have scored, but yeah. Nothing doing really. Nice header. <laughs> like, nobody really wanted to defend that at all. I think Portugal know that this game is pretty much done it dead and buried. And oh my goodness, Nani has scored from that position to make it 3 1. And if Scotland thought they had any chance of having a quick comeback, well, they were mistaken. Nani has scored from that distance. I just wanted to boot the ball out of play just so I could get the match over with. But. Did it take a deflection off that defender? Look, the defender jumped and, oh, it might not have, but it just dips in. And that is 3-1 to Portugal. It looked like it took a deflection. I don't, I can't really see it, but, okay. Well, Nani scored a really nice goal to end off the campaign. And Portugal are now three goals up. And that is going to be it. Portugal qualify for the World Cup with 30 points, zero losses. So that is your final group table and Portugal have gone through automatically. Italy will go to the playoffs. Scotland miss out by six points in the end. And Finland, Kazakhstan and San Marino didn't really stand a chance. Okay, so here is the draw for the World Cup. So let's see who made it. So in Group D, it's Mexico. In Group D, it's Romania. In Group F, it's Ivory Coast. In Group C, Argentina. In Group H, Japan. In Group E, Czech Republic. In Group B, it's the UAE. In Group G, it's Egypt. Uh, group E, Canada. In Group C, Italy, they made it. In Group F, it's Korea. And Slovenia in Group B, I'm going to have to slow it down because it's literally like going too fast. In Group A, it's Brazil, of course. In Group H, it's Portugal. We are with Japan right now, so okay, that's pretty promising. In Group E, it's Chile. In Group H, it's Belgium. Okay, right, so that's another 
big-ish team that Portugal have to contend with. Group A, Honduras. In Group H, it's Algeria. So in Group H, we have Belgium, Algeria and Japan. I don't really see them beating us, to be honest. Portugal have been so good in this campaign. So let's just fill out the rest of the teams in this one. France in Group A. In Group B, it's Colombia. In Group G, it's Russia. And then we got South Africa in Group C. In Group B, it's the Netherlands. In Group A, it's Nigeria. We have Paraguay in Group D and Germany in Group F and the remaining positions, England in Group G, um, USA in Group G and one final position goes to Spain. So before we end this video, let's have a look and see what went on around the world and see who came close and stuff like that. So in the final round of the Africa zone, um, this is how it looked like. So we have Cape Verde Islands losing very narrowly to South Africa and um, South Africa qualified. In the other game, we have Ivory Coast beating Zambia 5-2, so Ivory Coast qualified. In the other game, we have Nigeria squeezing by Gabon to qualify, unlucky Gabon. Uh, Egypt win on away goals on that one, so unlucky Mali in the Egypt and Mali match, and Algeria beat Angola by three goals to one. So in Asia, that's how the final round finished. Japan and the UAE go through. Iran went to the playoffs. Australia and China missing out. And in Group B, we have South Korea and Q8 going through in that one. Oman went to the playoffs, where Iran beat Oman 3-2 in that playoff game. In the OFC, nothing really surprising happened, unfortunately. New Zealand went to the Inter-Confederation playoff. In Comma Bowl, that's how your Comma Bowl group looked like. So Uruguay topped that one with 37 points, Argentina with 32, Colombia with 30, Chile with 26, and Paraguay going to the playoffs over Peru, assumingly on goal difference. The final round of CONCACAF looked like this. So United States went through, Mexico and Canada, and Honduras went to the playoffs. So we had some really close situations in Europe for the final day. As you can see, Belgium uh, qualified in Group A, Serbia went to the playoffs, and Denmark, who were top earlier, if you remember, actually bottled it on the final day to not qualify for the World Cup. Heartbreaking for Denmark there. In Group B, it was Romania that went through and Hungary going to the playoffs that was an incredibly close group um, in that one very very well-rounded group for all teams there in group C Russia went through automatically and Bosnia went to the playoffs Ukraine missing out by two points in group D it was Croatia in the end that um, failed to qualify and France went to the playoffs. The Netherlands went through automatically. In Group E, it was the Czech Republic that went through automatically. And England did obviously advance through the playoffs. We'll check out how they went through in a minute. Um, obviously, we know our group. In Group G, it was Germany who went through automatically. Turkey going through to the playoffs. Montenegro missing out by three points. And... Most surprisingly, I'd say the Faroe Islands picking up 13 points, only about five points behind Turkey in that group. So, yeah, the Faroe Islands had a really good campaign in that group. Uh, group H, it was Spain and Poland that went through. In the end, Poland went to the playoffs. And in Group I, it was Slovenia in the end that took that top spot and Greece went to the playoffs. In the Inter-Confederation playoffs, we have Paraguay beating Iran 3-0 and Honduras beating New Zealand by four goals to two. And in the European uh, playoff zone, we have some big results in this one. England beating Greece 2-1 over the two legs. We have Bosnia beating Poland by four goals to three in that group. Italy smashing Serbia 5-1 over the two legs. And the biggest result of the whole playoff round, France crushing Hungary by seven goals to nil over the two legs. Unlucky Hungary <laughs> to run into France like that. There were some big teams in that playoff round. But anyway, guys, that is the end of your Portugal part three of qualifying. Tune in next time where we will be playing in the actual World Cup. And I'm hoping for a really good performance 
in the next video for our conclusion of our Portugal series. If you did enjoy this video and other videos that I've put out in recent times, then give it a like and subscribe. It all helps. Thank you for watching this video and other videos as well. Keep it loco as always, and I'll see you again for the next video.